All right, we're gonna chat about Airbnb's biggest change in a decade, or so they say. Mm -hmm. There's summer release 2022, and we've got thoughts. And we do agree with Brian Chesky 100% on this, that quote unquote, the way people travel has changed forever. We believe not just travel, but the way they work, the way they live, the way they're gonna to continue to travel. And we're excited about that because we think it's more opportunity than ever yes. to open your homes to the most diverse group of people ever in history. And so let's go over the three changes that were made. Very, very guest focused. We're completely down with that. We're all about hospitality. So the three changes are the Airbnb categories. So a new way to search. Split stays is an innovative feature, provides more options for longer stays and then air cover for guests. So it's protection for the guest. Let's kind of break these down one by one, yep. Sarah. So we've got, we actually have on our TV up here, like all the different categories, and you can obviously look at these on, on your own Airbnb account, but there's just some cool things like A-frames and oh my God, <laughs> and islands and surfing. And so the biggest question we have as hosts is like, how do I get into that one of those categories? And what does that mean for me? 50, as, there, as, we, as of the recording today, there are 56 different categories. And as of the recording today, Airbnb has said they've heard hosts' concerns about, well, how do I get into a category? And then once I'm in it, how do I know I'm in a category? So Airbnb promises they're working on more transparency on that for us as hosts so that we can strive to make sure that we're showing up in these special um, categories, but you should also know that when a guest or a potential guest doesn't plug in OMG, they use dates. And when they use dates, they're still being shown whatever property is hitting the top of the search Airbnb search engine. And I think my favorite category, or just the one that I thought was most interesting was grand pianos. Why? I don't know. Why it was pianos? such a random one, I, and I'm interested. I want to know how that one made the cut because there's only, I think there's like 2,600, 27 homes that are grand pianos. 2,800 homes have grand pianos. So for all you piano players out there, you've got a category to search. Well, and I think the thing to note too is that we have so much, well, yeah, we, we have so much flexibility. Travelers have so much flexibility that they don't, they can have an experience they've never had before when they travel because they can work from anywhere, most people still. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why these searches are, are populating. And it does go back to the thing that Annette and I always preach, which is to not ignore your interior design, your exterior design, to do something out of the ordinary. And that might, you know, for a lot of us, we get into short-term rentals to, to buy property, or a lot of our audience does, mm -hmm. to build wealth. And having something unique can kind of slow down that process. You know, you don't have like all these short-term rentals. Quality over quantity. But I, I think this is this is proof that it's quality over quantity. I mean, we manage a property that is super, super unique, and we know the numbers on that property, and it does very well. So it's almost like, well, maybe you could slow down, put more thought and time and design into one property versus hustling to get, I don't know, 10 normal properties. I think you're gonna have a lot more fun and get um, a lot more interesting uh, guests and more money in your pocket. For sure. Okay, the next thing, let's talk about air cover for guests. You know, they brought out air, like they've always kind of had air cover for hosts, but then they relaunched air cover as a bigger initiative, but now they just launched it for guests. So we're gonna talk about, there's kind of four sections of it. Booking protection guarantee, Check-in guarantee, get what you book to guarantee. That seems very con you know, controversial to me. And then 24-hour safety line, which big fan of that. So let's kind of break these down bullet points, Sarah. Well, overarching theme, the reason why Annette and I show up to the mic each week on our podcast and here you know, on YouTube is to level up what it means to be a host. If we level up hosting, if we level up, we don't have to have a get what you booked guarantee. True. You know what I mean? We or a booking protection a guarantee. Right. People, if you're host is canceling you. And we do understand that like, there are things that happen that you do need to cancel the host, but those should be so few and far between. Like, I, I tend maybe to, one, like, I don't even, I'm trying to think, all the hosts I know, they've maybe had to rearrange and never cancel, like rearrange a guest because something severe happened at yeah. the, the home. But 
very, very rarely. Well, and our homes are snowflakes, we say that. And so if something goes wrong with your home, it's not like you can move them to the home down the hall like a hotel can. But I, we both tend to be like our friends and family will message us if they've had a bad or good Airbnb mm -hmm. experience. And just last week I had a guy who the host was had put it on Airbnb before it was ready. It wasn't ready, did not tell the guest. The guest was showing up for a wedding. Oh, no. The heat wasn't, notice. yeah, the heat wasn't turned on. Like there was still like paint drying. It, it smelled Can't bad. And so this poor guy like, you know, had a terrible experience and that puts a bad taste in travelers' mouths. For the whole so, brand. So I know that we, I, a lot of people who talk about these changes, a lot of like, you know, short-term rental Airbnb um, content creators are like so upset with Airbnb that they're like so guest friendly. But honestly, I think we need to put the responsibility on ourselves as hosts mm -hmm. and just do better. You know what I mean? So we don't have to have these sorts of... And the get what you booked, if you're really being transparent, your photos are on point, your properties are yeah, top notch, you, you won't have a problem with that. And you could, you could have a problem with that um, if the guest is just wanting to be... <laughs> and we can, we can talk about too how, okay, it's Airbnb's world, right? We're using their platform to find leads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they can do what they want, yes. right? And they want their guests to be happy, right? And so... You know, when you're really mad, I mean, I just, had a, I just had a call customer service for a totally different thing this morning, and like, I just wanted them to take care of it for me. So when guests are unhappy, you know, Airbnb wants to be like, okay, I'll just fix it for you. Um, and if that makes you unhappy, just level up your direct booking game and make your own rules. Mm -hmm. Like, it goes back to that too. And overall, like, all of these changes are just bringing more people to yeah. short-term rentals, to the Airbnb platform. So we welcome air cover, we welcome the split stays, we welcome the categories. That Airbnb is a huge marketing platform and they've done, they're doing a wonderful job by marketing these new changes. Um, I've been seeing the actual commercials myself online and they're fabulous and they're showing these unique categories and how different short-term rentals and, and Airbnb can be. If you're currently hosting, you know, ask yourself, have you seen a huge influx in first time guests? Cause we have like huge. And you know, back in the day we'd have a lot of um, trepidations for, you know, first time users, but now it's so common. We've had to really adjust our guest qualifying procedure from when we, because there are people who are seeing those commercials just like you are, they feel more confident because they have, you know, get air cover for guests, right? And so we as hosts just have to still qualify our guests that are staying in our properties and making sure we feel comfortable. But you're gonna see an influx of first time users, which is exciting. Which is very exciting. And that's why as a community of hosts, we have to make sure that we're up leveling and that first time stay, you know, we're hoping once they stay once in a short-term rental Airbnb, they're gonna to continue to do that. It'll be their preferred method moving forward. And that just means more business for all of us. Okay, we need to talk about split stays. Yes, let's do it. Oh, ooh, I did but jump over that. Let's do it. Yeah, so this, it sounds great in theory to me, but it feels clunky slash, I don't know. Airbnb has more uh, data behind why mm -hmm. they added this. There must be a need. People are traveling for a longer period of time. Instead of, set, instead of just experiencing you know, a space shuttle, they can experience a space shuttle and an A-frame all in one week. But you have to at least be traveling for a week. Yes. There has to be availability. Right. And the, the kind of, um, the way they've defined it here is they're really want, let's say someone, you're going to a, to on a trip for longer and you want to do two different experiences like um, ski and the beach or you want to go to two different parks they have like Zion and Grand Canyon here so you can kind of plan that trip um, the longer one but staying in multiple areas and have maybe two different or three different experiences at that same you know time Google Maps lets you like add a stop mm -hmm. I feel like it's oh, kind of like that good analogy <laughs> it's definitely like that yeah. and just helping helping you to because the other part I'm sure um, we get this a lot, I'm sure you do too, is where a guest really wants to stay at your house longer, but you're booked. So they're going to be in your location for, you know, 10 days, but your calendar is only open for five. So they need to find another place. So uh, that happens so Often. many times where it's like, oh man, I'd love to stay with you, but you're booked. So th this does allow them to split that stay up and, you know, let two hosts uh, yeah. be on the reservation. So again... Yes, it's all guest focused, but guests are also our customers as mm -hmm. hosts. So 
kind of flip your mindset there and understand why it's happening. And if you're truly bothered by any of these things, remember you can always level up your direct booking game as well. People are thinking more about staying in houses than hotels. Thank you, Airbnb. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a perfect time to ride on their coattails mm -hmm. and get your direct booking site up and make your own rules. Okay, so pre lots of new years, there's like pe people have been using Airbnb since, you know, what, 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, and you're operating in 2017, 18, 19, right? There's a lot, there's more seasoned guests than there are new guests. At that point, is their identity verified? What do their previous reviews say? And who placed those previous reviews? Mm -hmm. that, that's what's important to us when we are qualifying a guest to see if they're a good fit for us. And you can do that automatically. So if they meet those, you know, if they're po past positively reviewed, that's always hard to say, mm -hmm. and their identity is verified and we have instant book on, they can just book. Mm -hmm. But let's say they're missing one of those components and they would be if they're a new traveler. A lot of times they just need help filling out the information. Right. Like they may not know. Put, putting their identification in. But know, that in itself is a qualifier. Like yes. if they're willing to talk with you about oh, it. Absolutely. How do I do that? You can have a conversation. What's bringing you here? They'll say, oh my gosh, this is my first time. I was filling everything out. I didn't know that yes. I needed to put my ID in there. And don't be afraid to say, hey, I see your first timer user of Airbnb, short term rentals. We want to make sure you understand these few things. Yep. And you can educate a new or do you have any questions? Like, right. hey, we're not like a hotel. You are gonna have to self check in. We're really only available. Let's say you do go to bed at night. You could say, hey, we prefer that you check in before a certain yeah. time. That's when we'll are be you okay able. With these things? Yeah, we'll be able to help you more quickly if it's between these hours. So yeah, there's a lot of that communication. If it is the first time, that's where we want you to communicate even more with that guest. Because guess what? It's just gonna help you out um, once they're checked in and enjoying their time. They'll have less questions. Yep. I think our property acquisition has absolutely changed the game for us. Yeah, we're thinking bigger. next properties are really going to have to be special. something special and we're willing to wait that out um, and find that. And it, it just goes back to really putting the importance on creating your own customer base and your own direct booking site. So when there are changes that might not always behoove us, we'll be prepared for those. So here's the deal, like if a great property deal comes our way, we're going to take it right. and we're going to make it a short term rental because our buy box is in, you know, great areas where people want to come and hang out, all that kind of good stuff. That's a no brainer. But I think what we mean is like we want a property that is that can go into the OMG category, mm -hmm. right? Or the Arctic category or the beach category, right? Like now we're like, we should coin a phrase like we want to be like Airbnb category. That's our buy box. <laughs> Something just special and unique um, where we can get a bigger bang for our buck. I mean, how, and, and big is kind of just depends on what comes across the desk of like, hey, is there something where we need more partners on it? Is there something that we can make happen? Is it something where there's multiple properties on one piece of, of land or one piece of property? Could yeah. there be multiple, multiple places on that piece I of land? Portfolio mm -hmm. or buy, yeah. Just the, des the interior design and maximizing anything you have on the exterior for the guest. Have and just, a concept. yeah, how can you make your individual home its own boutique hotel vibe? Like, how can each room tell a story? How can you have those, you know, micro moments in, in, the, in each room? And they really can be like micro magical moments. They don't have to like, can be completely mind blowing, but every room needs to have something well thought out. And here's how I think about it. What, we're, what we found works really well with a, with a simple residential home, make sure the bones are great, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure the walls are great, the trim is not MD yet, but the grout is dark, we like darker grout. Um, but you don't have to, I mean, unless it's part of your design, like that can all be just solid standard mm -hmm. blank slate stuff. And then you can have fun with wallpapers and um, furniture and lighting fixtures and, and where you put the, maybe we put wallpaper on the ceiling, maybe there's wallpaper in the drawers. Like, 
I, it's almost like the decorating mm -hmm. more so than you don't, don't feel like you have to have this like architectural digest to, to, to end up in the, the design category. You right. can have a lot of fun with those, that final layer before you invite a guest in to stay. And then the biggest part is like, just make sure that you're giving that five-star experience, yes. that what you have advertised is exactly what the guest is getting. Like that will never do you wrong. That is always going to help you get that five-star review. Yes, that will, that's, that's always going to win. So as long as you're welcoming that guest into your very clean, ready to go, guest ready home, you're, hopefully you're going to get that five-star review and other guests are going to see those reviews and bring them back. The one question we get all the time is like, do we feel like it's saturated right now because Airbnb and short-term rentals are so sexy? But unfortunately, it's like that 80-20 rule is very much in play with short-term rentals. I mean, of all the short-term rentals, 80% of them don't have that awesome guest experience, that mm -hmm. solid customer service. And we're just like, if you can, if you can up level, you're gonna rise to the top. Yeah. So don't be scared. I think one thing is before we would kind of like get away with like a workstation being a kitchen table or an island um, in a home, but now it is truly a desk and a chair in a space that can be designated as a work from home office for them and no longer trying to like falsely create work areas but making it its own, focus. it's a focus and make sure that it's um, photographed as such and they know that this is, can be a workspace for the long, for the long haul. As for, you know, how we changed our listings, yeah, reinventing, the cool thing is it's like, okay, let's say you have a space that's been listed for a while and it's not like design worthy, but it's solid, your customer service is there. I mean, those properties of ours are still doing really, really well. I think it goes back to Annette's point of, just be an awesome host, be hospitable, um, uh, under promise and over deliver, all those are still gonna win out. Mm -hmm. But then if you are looking at your numbers and you're like, you know what, we could, here's our competition, maybe we can revamp this space, then that goes back to my, our other tip of like, if the bones are good and you can reinvest and have like a really interesting experience with the decor and design, I mean, do it. It's proven that those are, those are the sorts of things that are that are standing out. But good photos are still incredibly important um, because, it, well, Airbnb kind of took away our ability to have a title that helps describe your property in words rather than photo, but they are, they did say they're bringing that back because so many hosts were upset about that. But again, it goes back to your, your hero image, that first image they see really telling the story of what a guest can expect. So it's gotta be something super different than your competition and a big wow moment so, I mean, we've always put a lot of thought into the hero image, but more so now than ever. And just constantly changing your list, always tweaking it. They're always adding new things. So making sure if there's a new cat, if there's something that Airbnb has added within the last week, yeah. two weeks that you're, you're updating your listing, you're updating your pricing, making sure you're not setting it and forgetting it. Like that's, that's the key there is just always going in and updating your listing also.